odd numbered pages have the words of the service, the even numbered pages have the commentary with a little background on uh, what the parts of the service mean. Those of you who are members of St. John's may be particularly interested. The last two pages of this booklet explain our stained glass windows and uh, what uh, the pictures are intended to mean there. I hope that you also receive the blue sheet. It's the outline of today's message. There are blanks to fill in as the sermon proceeds, uh, knowing that now you can locate a pencil or a pen to fill in those blanks. The white sheet in the bulletin has the readings and psalms and hymns for today. There is a misprint on the opening hymn. The opening hymn should be 664. That's Fight the Good Faith. Faith. Fight the Good Fight. 664. It is um, uh, not correct on the hymn board nor in the bulletin. But I've let you in on the seat. This afternoon, I understand we have a uh, fellowship uh, card party uh, from 2 to 4. Or is that the right hour? It's in the bulletin. Yeah, 2 to something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's a great intergenerational um, gathering. And uh, those of us who uh, enjoy Pinochle or Euchre um, really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, you may bring another game, uh, and uh, maybe you might be able to persuade others to play it with you, but you uh, heard uh, Pinochle seem to be the down uh, ones. And they usually refresh this as well. Following this service is Bible class. We are studying the career of Elijah um, in the church basement. There's continental breakfast provided as well. Are there other announcements that need to be made at this time? Anita. Yeah. Um, in the back of the church is the church gift bag, September 11th, and everyone's invited. Family has the numbers so <laughs> right, and they also have a sign up list for you to bring in dish. So sign up what you like to bring. You sign your name for the first time. Very good. Please sign up for the church picnic on uh, September 11th. Fred. Which hymn was not right? The first hymn oh. should be 664 oh. instead of 44. Yes. All right. Uh, let's take a moment then for silent prayer. You may note the prayer of preparation uh, there at uh, page five. Um, while the bells are rung, then we may sing the opening hymn, six sixty-four. And the Lord bless our worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All may kneel. God spoke these words and said, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall honor your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not kill. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his servants, nor his cattle, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these your laws in our hearts, we pray. God threatens to punish all that transgress these commandments. Therefore, we should fear his wrath and not act contrary to them. But he promises grace and every blessing to all that keep these commandments. Therefore, we should also love and trust in him and willingly do according to his commandments. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may stand and share a greeting of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. The intro on the scripture insert is sung responsibly. Cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain you.
from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and, all, and for all who offer their, <clears throat> their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, since you have given your only Son as a sacrifice for our sins, and also, for, and also give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow his ways. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Endure. When will you judge those who persecute me? The end. 
insulin of dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me. They have almost made an end of me on earth. But I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love give me life. That I may count the testimonies of your mouth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Hebrews, chapter 11 and 12, starting with the 17th verse. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering, offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able to, even to raise him from the dead, from which he figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of his sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus to, of the Israelites and gave directions according to his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward by faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured a seeing him who was invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith the people crossed the Red Sea as they on dry land, but for the but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, because they were given a friendly welcome to the, to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, David, and Samuel, and the prophets, whom through faith conquered king, kingdoms, and enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. Then they were sawed saw in two. They were killed with the sword. They were about. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had promised something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are assured by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings, to, which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, 
despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not, so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text is taken from the epistle for this day, Hebrews 11, which has been read. You may sit. I hope that you received the blue sheet which has the outline of today's message. Filling in the blanks will help you to retain the message from God's Word this morning. I call your attention to words of our text printed at the top. Hebrews 11 verses 23 to 29. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. This is our text. There's a secular book I read about 20 years ago entitled, Feel the Fear, But Do It Anyway. The author, Susan Jeffers, coached the reader through situations like public speaking, where panic threatens to overcome you. Rather than being paralyzed by fear, she counseled the reader to acknowledge the feeling, but not be ruled by it. She advocated a form of faith or confidence in oneself as the cure for intimidation, paralysis, or panic. In some ways, she had taken the ideas of Norman Vincent Peale, whose earlier bestseller was The Power of Positive Thinking. Peale's bestseller argued that God wanted you to have faith in yourself, and Jeffers just took the God part out. But our text today speaks of a different kind of faith. It is true that confidence, a word that means with faith, has many benefits in sales, in mating, and in leadership. The person of faith may imagine that the point of faith is to live a better life with temporal blessings. This is related to the idea of the prosperity gospel. But our reading from Hebrews celebrates another kind of faith whose source and object is not the believer, but God. Amen. I was struck as I read our text where it says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Of course they were afraid of the king's edict. That's why they hid Moses in the first place. And later our text says, by faith, Moses left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Well, of course Moses was afraid. That's why he fled. So what is going on here? This, that when Moses' parents felt fear, they did not let it rule them. Despite the king's edict, they did not hand over their infant to death. And Moses, despite feeling fear of Pharaoh's anger, did not fail to deliver his countrymen from an unjust beating. By faith, he was able to feel the fear, but act by faith. 
It is important for us to realize that faith does not extinguish the human emotions. Whether fear or anger or pain or perplexity. People of faith experience these unpleasant emotions as much or maybe more than non-believers. Consider Christ our model of perfect faith. He felt the fear of the passion at Gethsemane as he sweat blood in his anxiety. He wept for his friend Lazarus as he stood at the grave. He felt these emotions, but they did not dissuade him from acting in faith and in faithfulness. In fact, Christ felt all the pain that we do and more. As C.S. Lewis has pointed out, only the weightlifter who raises the 500-pound barbell has experienced its full weight. Only those who resist temptation to the last know just how strong temptation is. So often we expect our faith to lead to deliverance from trouble when God has promised endurance as well as deliverance. This is why great heroes of faith like Abraham are not people we would describe as lucky. Rather, we describe them as enduring. They could endure, not because they had faith in themselves, did you notice in our reading the one party that had faith or confidence in themselves? The Egyptians who followed the Israelites through the Red Sea. They figured they could do it. Why not we? And they stepped into the path that led Israel across, but their faith was in vain. The God in whom Israel trusted allowed the waters to wash over these self-confident Egyptians and drown them all. Faith without a proper object is useless at best. Faith in something other than the truth leads to destruction. This is why Jeremiah's message was so important. He denounced the false prophets who spoke of their dreams and of the desires of their own hearts as if, there were, as if these were God sent. Their listeners wanted to believe the false prophets' happy talk, for their hearts and dreams were just as misguided, corrupt, and self-serving as their false prophets. Nothing other than God's Word could serve as the object of faith and enable God's people to endure the difficult times Jeremiah found himself in. Two boys went to a movie. Each was confident of getting in. Each had a ticket in his pocket, but the one boy's ticket was fake. He had been sold this by a cheater, while the other had a genuine ticket issued by the theater company. Each was confident, feeling good about what they were about to experience, but only one would be admitted. So today, Many think they are going to be admitted to heaven because they have confidence despite what God has said to the contrary. They've been sold a bill of goods by the deceiver, Satan himself, backed up by the world in its desires. Faith is like a rope that needs to be attached to an anchor. I once went fishing and threw out the anchor, then after a little while realized I was drifting far away from my spot. My rope had not been properly tied to the anchor, although it looked like I was anchored because I had a rope in the water. It was doing me no good because it was not tied to anything. So our faith must be anchored to God's Word. It must be joined to His promise. That is what keeps us from drifting blindly according to the world's currents. Make sure your faith is tied to God's promise. 
Our text from Hebrews celebrates the power of faith to change us. By faith, Moses chose rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Now who would choose mistreatment rather than pleasure? It further says, Moses considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. What kind of man chooses reproach rather than earthly treasures? I will tell you, someone touched by God. Moses was touched by the word of God, which gave him that faith. And this is genuine as opposed to counterfeit faith. Genuine faith is given by God, a work of the Holy Spirit, who comes to us through the word or message of God. Only this gift of God can convince us that God's kingdom is worth suffering for. That God's opinion of us is worth forfeiting the esteem of men. That the hope of God's vague promise of what we cannot understand is superior to the concrete pleasures of sin that surround us, surround us and offer themselves to us every day. As our text says about Moses, he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses walked by faith and not by sight. You and I have been touched by the Word of God. We have gathered to confess our faith and praise God the Father who created us, God the Son who redeemed us, and God the Spirit who enables us to believe. May the word we have heard today enable us to live life on earth but be minded of heaven. May we feel the fear but act in faith every troubling situation so that others may perceive God's grace is available to them as well as to us and God will be glorified in us now and forever. And may that peace of God that surpasses understanding keep your hearts and minds in this true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess that faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed on page 15 in the booklet. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may sit to receive the offering. Please sign the friendship register, those green pads at the end of the pews. Indicate your reception of Holy Communion, if applicable today. Please stand when the offering is brought forward.
pray for the Holy Christian Church that God may strengthen our faith through the word we have heard. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks and praise to you for the Holy Spirit's gifts, faith, hope, and love. Strengthen our faith that we may be able to feel the fear but act according to your will that our confidence may be not in ourselves but in your eternal promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the mission of the church that many more may hear the word of God and come to faith. Heavenly Father, we praise you that you have called to yourself a people and that you have counted us among them as your church. Bless us in our individual Christian lives. Bless us in our corporate life in this congregation, in our confessional fellowship of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and in our unity with the church throughout the world, that your word may not be bound, but convert many hearts and bring many to faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our nation and our leaders, that they may be of God's servants for our good. Look with favor, Lord, on our President Joseph Biden, our Governor Gretchen Whitmer, all of our legislators, judges, magistrates, and public servants, that they may have the wisdom to recognize the common good and the courage to pursue the same. Bless us, O Lord, to whom you have entrusted the gift of government accountable to the people to be good stewards of this privilege as we influence public policy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve our nation in the armed forces. Heavenly Father, look with favor on these listed in our bulletin who serve our nation. Safeguard them, Lord, from the temptation of this mode of life, especially that they may use the power of the sword only on behalf of justice. Grant us grace to recognize and encourage these public servants, those who endure hardship or danger on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the troubled in heart or mind who are in need of our prayers. Heavenly Father, you know the secrets of our hearts. Look with favor, Lord, on those whose troubles are too deep to share with others. Lord, you know our needs better than we ourselves. Grant us the grace, the healing, the help that is needful in every situation. We especially commend into your hands our, our shut-ins and others, Lord, who do not, uh, who are not able to go out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for the sick and the shut in and those who care for them. Look with favor, Lord, on Lillian, Rosemary, Gage, John, Hilda, Scott, Reverend Dan, Conrad, Robin, Jackie, Ruth Ann, Linda, Dave, Tia, Nora, Brenda, Jean, Kenneth, John, Linda, David, George, Sherry, Brenda, Sydney, Katie, Brian, John, Joe, Mary, Sandy, Walter, Jeff, James, Linda, Lori, and many others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in the family way and those with young children. Look with favor, Lord, on, on Hannah who is in the family way and for others who have the care of young children. Grant them uh, grace for this important work of holding young lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's ask God's, let's ask Let's give thanks and prayer for special blessings received. Lord, we give thanks of, for your blessing to uh, 
John and Anita who celebrate a 51st wedding anniversary. And for her, Anita's sister Linda, that you would continue to bless your people with every good gift in Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us ask God's blessing for a particular matter of concern. Lord, we ask your blessing, your that you would pour out your peace on the nations of the world, especially there, where there is violence, those who suffer in Ukraine and in other places, that your that your peace may govern the nations in our time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all these for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The communion liturgy continues on page 19. The Lord be with you. Sanctified 
in body and soul and spirit and have our portion with all your saints in light. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be 